welcome to Leroy United Methodist Church on this Communion Sunday. Today we are celebrating the Sacrament of Holy Communion, so those who are worshiping here in our sanctuary, you should have received a bag with uh, the Communion elements as you arrived this morning. Susan is distributing those. Uh, for those who are worshiping with us online, we invite you to gather bread and or crackers and juice so that you can partake with us at the end of the service today. It is a joy to have Matt Chidsey here with us today. I asked him to come and play one more time before I leave, so we are excited that he is here to offer his gift of music to us today. It's a joy to have all of you who are here in the sanctuary worshiping with us today, as well as those who are worshiping uh, with us from home online. So all of you who are here in the sanctuary, if you have the Facebook app on your phone, please silence your phone and then log on to Facebook to greet those who are uh, worshiping online and those who are worshiping online and greet those who are here in the sanctuary. Next Sunday, June 13th, we will be celebrating Graduate Recognition Sunday. So we invite you to come and be a part of that and then on June 20th, which will be my last Sunday here in worship with all of you, after worship, we will be having a special church conference to approve our leadership roster and budget for the new fiscal year beginning July 1st. Uh, so we encourage you all to attend as well. And we will have a Zoom option afterwards for voting for those who are not uh, able to be here in person. Again, special thanks to those who are assisting in worship today. We have Kim Love, who is uh, our lay reader. Susan Franz is our greeter. Matt on piano and Rick Hawk as our tech. So let us prepare our hearts for worship as Kim comes to lead us in the call to worship. Good morning, friends. Please join me. Before the earth was formed, we were chosen by God to be God's people. God, God gathers us together that we might sing of joy and hope as God's beloved. Before the stars glittered in the night sky, we were chosen through Christ to be God's family. Christ, Christ gathers us together that we might share the good news of redemption. Before the rivers flowed to the seas, we were chosen by the Spirit to serve creation. The Spirit gathers us together that we might dance in the fields of peace with our sisters and brothers. Please join us in our opening hymn, Amazing Grace, My Chains Are Gone.
Amen. Will the children who are here in the sanctuary who would like to come forward may do so now, and those who are worshiping online may come close. All right. How are you all this morning? Good? School's over, right? Yay. Can you all see? I'm going to be reading the story. I want the folks online to be able to see too. So, all right. I am reading a story today. It's called I Am Enough. And it's written by Grace Byers. And the pictures are by Ketura Bobo. It's called I Am Enough. Like the voice, I'm here to sing. Like the bird, I'm here to fly and soar high over everything. Like the trees, I'm here to grow. Like the mountains, here to stand. Like time, I'm here to be and be everything I can. See? Like the champ, I'm here to fight. Like the heart, I'm here to love. Like a ladder, here to climb. And like the air, to rise above. Like the wind, I'm here to push. Like a rope, I'm here to pull. Like the rain, I'm here to pour. And drip and fall until I am full. Like the moon, I'm here to dream. Like the student, here to learn. Like the water, here to swell. Like the fire, here to burn. Like the winner, I'm here to win. And if I don't, get up again. I know that I may sometimes cry, but even then, I'm here to try. I'm not meant to be like you. You're not meant to be like me. Sometimes we will get along, and sometimes we will disagree. I know that we don't look the same, our skin, our eyes, our hair, our frame. But that does not dictate our worth. We both have places here on Earth. And in the end, we are right here to live a life of love, not fear. To help each other when it's rough, to say together, I am enough. And each one of you is enough. You are created just as God wanted you to be. And God loves you very, very much. So we want you all to know that. As you go into your summer and enjoy all the fun things that you do now that school's out, just remember, you are enough, and God loves you very, very much. And um, my sister has um, summer clothes, and, um, um, and this one of the summer clothes has a bow. Oh, okay. Well, that sounds really snazzy. Thank you for telling me about that. Can we say a prayer together today? All right. Dear God, we thank you that you love us very much and that with you, we are enough. We don't have to be anybody that, you, that we are not. You created us and love us. Thank you for each of the kids of our church, those who are here, those who visit us online. Just keep them all safe as they go into this summer and help them to always remember how much you love them, and how much we love them here, too. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you all so much for coming up today. It's good to see your faces. The epistle lesson comes from Ephesians 1, verses 1 through 14. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus, 
by the will of God. To the saints who are at Ephesus and are faithful in Christ Jesus, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. Just as he chose us in Christ before the foundation of the world to be holy and blameless before him in love, he destined us for adoption as his children through Jesus Christ, according to the good pleasure of his will. To the praise of his glorious grace that he freely bestowed on us in the beloved. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses, according to the riches of his grace that he hath lavished on us. With all wisdom and insight, he has made known to us the mystery of his will according to his good pleasure that he sent forth in Christ as a plan for the fullness of time to gather up all things in him, things in heaven and things on earth. In Christ, we have also obtained an inheritance, having been destined according to the purpose of him who accomplishes all things according to his counsel and will, so that we, who were the first to set our hope on Christ, might live for the praise of his glory. In him you also, when you have heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and had believed in him, were marked with the seal of the promise, Holy Spirit. This is the pledge our, of our inheritance toward redemption as God's own people to praise of his glory. Your end the lesson. Thank you, Kim. Please pray with me. Oh God, we thank you that you have created us, that you have redeemed us and have marked us with the promise of the Holy Spirit. Open our hearts today, oh God, to know and to understand your great love and your mercy and grace for us. And now may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Well, June is here. <laughs> Hard to believe. June is here. And our time together is quickly drawing to an end. And as we come to this time of transition of leadership here at Leroy United Methodist Church, over the next five weeks, we will be exploring the book of Ephesians. I'm beginning this series looking at the first three chapters of the book, and Reverend Larry Marshall will preach on Sunday, June 27th, which is the transition Sunday between my move out date and Pastor Megan's move in date. And then Pastor Megan will complete this series on her first Sunday here on July 4th. So to give you just a little bit of a background on this book of Ephesians, this, this letter, the heart of this epistle is unity in the body of Christ. Unity in the body of Christ. Now, there is some debate among biblical scholars about who actually wrote this book and who its intended audience was, who it was meant for. The words in Ephesus that we see in the first verse were not included in the oldest manuscripts of this letter, leading some scholars to think that it was more of a general letter to churches with those recipients actually just filling their own name or church name into the letter. The one sent to Ephesus then would be the one that was included in the New Testament. And if Paul were the author of this letter, well, it could not have been addressed directly to Ephesus since the author really isn't known to the readers. Verse 15, which was after what Kim read this morning, said, I have heard of your faith. And we know from other writings of Paul that he was very well known to the people in Ephesus. So it's possible that the letter was of a more general nature, a letter that was written to many different churches with each church filling in their own name. And I find comfort in that, really, 
Because in this way, today, we are not just overhearing a message that was meant for one church in a particular time, but it's a word that is meant for our church today. Scholars also note that some of the language of the letter seems to point to someone other than Paul as the author. Um, they think that maybe uh, the content of it is, is really like Paul, but that um, it could have possibly been one of Paul's followers that wrote the letter and in accord with the ancient custom at that time, attributed it to the one whose ideas he was writing about. In any sense, the book of Ephesians is a resounding song of hope. It's about unity in the church and it's a resounding song of hope. And this particular text that we've heard today is an affirmation of God's prevenient grace. Prevenient grace, which means that it's God at work in our lives even before we are aware of it. Long before humanity may even realize it, God is working in our lives. But whether it's written by Paul or one of his followers, or whether it's to a specific church or to all of the, faith, the saints who are faithful in Jesus Christ, the intent is clear. The intent is to shore up and to strengthen, to strengthen the church of Jesus Christ. We are reminded again and again throughout this letter of who we are and whose we are. Brought back to the sheer joy of living as God's people. The letter starts out right away. It sort of plunges, if you will, into this cascade of beauty and riches. We are lavished with abundant blessings and glorious grace for God's own good pleasure. This isn't something that's done on a whim. Rather, it was purposely, purposely planned before the foundation of the world. God has adopted us as God's own children, made us to be God's own people, and has given us an inheritance in Christ. God has chosen us. God has chosen us to be holy and to be blameless in love, forgiven and redeemed through Christ. The words in this text just kind of flow in this endless stream of praise and of wonder, as if they were meant to lift us up to the very presence of God. And the focus on this in this text is on God's action. The focus is on God's actions. This isn't something that is our doing. It is a gift. There is nothing for us to do, really, just to live for his praise and glory. Our chief end, our purpose, is to glorify God and enjoy God forever. Our purpose is to glorify God and to enjoy God forever. And though it's not specifically mentioned in this text, the language in these verses reminds me of baptism. At baptism, we rejoice that God has claimed us and has called us as God's own. We remember how Christ washed away our sins. We see the sign and the seal of God's promise. We pray for the Spirit to come upon the water and upon the one who's receiving the sacrament. In the United Methodist Church, we believe that baptism serves as one's initiation or introduction into the church. We baptize infants and children and adults as a sign of the covenant of God's claim on our lives. We recognize that God is at work in our lives long before we are ever aware of it or long before we're ever, ever able to make that decision on our own to follow Jesus Christ. Then when children are old enough, 
they can make that public profession of faith at confirmation and reaffirm those commitments that were made on their behalf at baptism. Baptism is God's work. <laughs> it's not our work. It's not anything that we can earn or do on our own. In the United Methodist Church, we don't rebaptize people because that somehow says that God didn't get it right the first time or that God reneged on his end of the deal. Baptism is God's work, not our work. But we do have services to remember them, recognizing that God has marked and sealed us as children of God, that God, as our creator, has a claim on our lives, that God loves us us lavishly. Do you hear that? God loves us lavishly. <laughs> I've mentioned before that one of my favorite authors is Barbara Brown Taylor. And in her book called The Preaching Life, she tells this moving story from her own childhood that awakens this sense of joy of living of, as a child of God. She says that her grandmother was this tough and stern woman. She describes her as an awesome presence, especially to a child. She says she was most known for her shrewd sense of business and her bad temper, and that even her appearance was intimidating. She had both legs amputated from untreated diabetes, and her dark aviator glasses protected her eyes, and she said she looked like a handicapped bomber pilot. <laughs> but she lavished her love on her grandchildren. When they came to visit, there were special treats, piles of presents, and long, lazy afternoons together. Each child received a night of pampering. She writes in her book, when night came, she treated me like long lost royalty, filling the tub with suds and then beckoning me in, where she washed each of my limbs in turn and polished my skin with her soft, great sponge. After she dried me off, she anointed me with Jurgen's lotion. <laughs> then she reached for her dusting powder, evening in Paris, and tickled me all over with her pale blue puff. When she was done, I knew I was precious. I was absolutely convinced. I was loved. Ephesians reminds us of God's love for us. And the flowing words of this text envelop us with that kind of love, excessive and tender and richly, richly abundant. And yet the language of Ephesians is not individualistic. As beloved as we all are, we are lifted up into something that is far greater than ourselves. We are blessed in Christ. We are chosen in Christ. We are destined for adoption through Christ. In Christ, we have obtained our inheritance and our hope is set on him. The constant plural pronouns, plural pronouns that we see throughout this text, remind us that this gift is not some individual blessing, but it's always for the whole community of Christ. This passage offers us sort of a counter to our world's understanding of worth. It isn't merely that we are somehow special, but rather that we have been taken up into something that is extraordinary and offered this gift to receive on our own. Like a pauper who's invited to a place instead of a prince or a princess, we have been invited to share the riches of Christ's grace, of God's grace. God has accomplished all of this on our behalf through Jesus Christ, so that, so that we might live as God's own children. That's who we are. 
God's beloved children, God's beloved community. And so this morning, I'd like for us to just take a few minutes of quiet reflection and prayer to remember that we are indeed God's children, that as God's created beings, we are worth something. As we heard in the children's story, we are enough. We remember that God does indeed have a claim on our lives and that God is at work in our lives even when we are not aware of it or when we don't acknowledge it. We remember that God has chosen us and lavished love and grace on us. Not because we deserve it. <laughs> Not because we deserve it, but because it is a gift. A gift that is made possible through Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Gracious God, we, we come before you today knowing that we are unworthy of your love. And yet we bask in your grace and your mercy and your forgiveness. You have lavished us, lavished us with your grace. You have given us every spiritual blessing. And you have even seated us in heavenly places alongside of Jesus. Not because of who we are, but because of who you are. So today, oh God, we simply say, we love you. We thank you for your grace and your mercy and forgiveness. And we praise you. We praise you in the name of your son, our savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Matt is going to come and offer some special music for us.
That song always makes me cry, so thanks, Matt. <laughs> I don't think there's a dry eye in the house here and probably not um, online either. So thank you for sharing your gift with us today. We have come to the time in our service when we share with one another our joys and concerns. And we invite those who are live streaming with us to share their joys and concerns in the comments so that we might be praying with you and for you. Um, some, before I open it up to the congregation here in the house, um, a few prayer concerns that I'd like to share with all of you. Um, many of you may have seen the email that came out on Friday that Larry and Marty Hendershot's daughter, um, Dave and Leslie Moore's sister, Lisa Fogger, died on Friday morning. Um, so please hold them in your prayers at this time. Um, Ruth Alasco has also asked for Christians. Prayers for her sister, Helen, um, who was in the ER on Friday night and has been very ill this week. Um, also for Sandy Hastings, who will be having spine surgery tomorrow. So please hold her in your prayers and in your care. And I've asked for prayers before for my parents, Kathy and Bob Dillon. Um, my, dad, my mom has uh, some brain bleeds and has a medical appointment at the end of this week for some additional consultation. And so I'll be traveling to Indianapolis to be with her for that appointment this week. So we really appreciate your prayers for her as well. Are there other joys and concerns of those who are here in the sanctuary? If not, then let's take a few moments for some silent prayer to be in God's presence. <laughs> and then we'll have the pastoral prayer and the Lord's prayer. O oh God, who has created us, who has chosen us, and who has given us inheritance through Jesus Christ, we come to you this day. We come to praise you and to worship you. We come to thank you for your love and your grace and your mercy. We come to fellowship with you and with one another. We come to remember your sacrifice for us and to remember just how much you love us. Today, oh God, we, we are here. We're here to learn. We're here to grow. Work your spirit in and through each one of us in this place and those who are watching online. Move your spirit among us, oh God, that we might not just be content to be your beloved, but that we might share that with others, that they might know of their inheritance in you too. God, for those who we have mentioned aloud, those who are grieving a loss that we cannot begin to imagine, those who are sick and ill and facing surgery, those who don't know what the future holds, None of us know what the future holds, oh God, but we are grateful that you are the one who holds our future. Oh God, we lift all of these things to you and all the things that we hold in our hearts that we can't quite articulate yet, knowing that your spirit intercedes for us. We lift all of these things to you, oh God because you are our God and you love us lavishly. We pray them today in the name of your son, Jesus Christ, our savior, our hope, our salvation, who taught his disciples to pray, saying, our father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. As we come to our time of offering this morning, we thank you for your continued support of the ministries of this church that help us to love God more, to love people, to serve the world, um, and to be a light and a hope to our community. So the offerings that are up here in the plate this morning represent all of those that have been received online, those that are received in the mail, those that are in the box in the back. And this prayer prays over all of them that they might be used to further God's kingdom. So Kim, will you lead us in prayer? Please join me in the offertory prayer. Blessed one, you offer our redemptive inheritance, sometimes beyond our imagination. You graciously bestow each of us with your wisdom, grace, forgiveness, and love. Joyously, we share these tithes and offerings. As you call us to give, you remind us to place our hopes and dreams in your love and grace. Thank you, God, for giving us your Son and our Savior, Jesus Christ. We pray in his name. Amen. Those who are in the sanctuary this morning, you should have received a bag with your communion elements in it. And as we come to Christ's table today, we remember that God has chosen us and has lavished his love and his grace on us. Not because we deserve it, but because it is a gift. A gift made possible through Jesus Christ. Today, as we come, some of us are physically together in this space, while others are joining with us through the gift of technology. But no matter the means by which we come, we are all still bound together in Christ's love. And our presence with one another is marked by our shared prayers and our praises, our shared hearing and affirming of God's word and of God's grace for us. And now it's marked by our shared eating. The peace and the presence of the Lord is with us. It comes to us as we are marked and sealed by the Spirit. And so we lift up our hearts and we give thanks to the Lord our God because it is the right and the good thing to do, not only now, but always and everywhere. We thank you, Creator God, that you made us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. And when we turned away and our love failed, you reached out to us again and again, showing us that your grace is enough. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of our God. Blessed is your son who came to preach good news to the poor, release to the captives, and recovery of sight to the blind, who freed the oppressed and announced that the time would come when you would save your people. On that night before his death, Jesus took bread and he gave thanks to you and he broke the bread and he gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this to remember me. And when the supper was over, he took the cup and he gave thanks to you. And he gave it to his disciples and he said to them, drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Drink this often to remember me. May those of us who are gathered today be a community of love and grace, always proclaiming that mystery of faith that Christ has died Christ is risen, and Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on all who have gathered at your table and on these gifts of bread and wine. 
Let them be for us the body and the blood of Christ, so that we may be for the world the body of Christ, made whole by his love and his grace. And now, Holy Spirit, make us one in Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world, until Christ comes again, and we all feast together at his heavenly table. May all honor and glories be yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. The bread on your table, or in your little bag, is blessed and broken. It is gluten-free, and it is a meal of grace. Take. Sharing love, we will never be hungry. And the cup on your table, or the cup in your little bag, is blessed and shared, offering mercy and forgiveness. Drinking deeply, we will never thirst. Please pray with me. Oh God, we indeed give you thanks for your son, Jesus Christ, for this mystery in which he has given himself for us. Now that we have been nourished and strengthened, give us the grace to go forward and give ourselves for others. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. Our closing song is The Power of Your Love.
Jesus Christ. So may you know that deep in your heart today, not just for yourself, but that this is who we are. This is our identity as a community of faith. And now may the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always.